Hey, it's Mike and Kate, and every year as we get into 2015, we like to look back and come up with our favorite movies of the past year. And not only do we do it, but also our Mix 106 official movie critic, Willie Waffle, likes to give us his picks for his favorite movies. Now, these aren't the most critically acclaimed movies. These are his picks for his favorite movies. So first, before we get to your picks, Willie, how many movies do you think you saw last year? Oh, man. I mean, I want to say about 175, maybe. I was going to say, on an average week, what are you seeing, four? Three to four weeks. Yeah, so right. times 52. Wow. Okay. Let's, let's start at number 10. Give us your 10 favorites. Number 10, Jake Gyllenhaal doing his best Robert De Niro impression in Nightcrawler. I'm bummed I didn't see this in the theater. You've got to go see it. It's a really cool movie. I mean, it's Jake Gyllenhaal just acting creepier and crazier than Taylor Swift ever would accuse him of acting. <laughs> All right, number nine. Fury with Brad Pitt. Uh, I, you know, it's a great war movie. I think it's a movie that a lot of people have forgotten and, and really should be remembered a lot more as we get later into the year. You know, playing the tank commander in World War II, trying to, you know, save us from the Nazis. A little disturbing, too. Uh, number eight. Gone Girl. I feel like Gone Girl is junk food for the soul. Like, you know, there's nothing redeeming about this movie, but you just get all wrapped up in the gossipy feel of it and the nastiness of it and, and just the cruelness of it. You can't look away. It's so awesome. And I loved it just because I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So, the twists and turns. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Uh, number, what are we up to? Seven. 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 Interstellar, starring Matthew McConaughey, still driving his truck just like he does in all those <laughs> Lincoln commercials. <laughs> And then he's driving the spaceship just like he does in all the Lincoln commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. X-Men Days of Future Past. Yes, one of our biggest summer movies, one of our most action-packed movies, was also really just cool. I mean, the way they were bouncing back and forth through time, it just blew my mind. And you I'm said there. you thought this was the best of the 25 X-Men movies, didn't you? I really did. I thought it was maybe one of the best action movies I've ever seen. Oh, wow. All right, number five. Number five, The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch, a movie that you're going to hear a lot more about as we go through the next few weeks. You know, he plays the man who helped beat the Nazis in World War II, based on a true story, and it's such a tragic story and such a fascinating story on top of it. Uh, number four. The Lego Movie, because everything is awesome in the Lego Movie. <laughs> uh, don't start singing, please. No, I just no, got that no, song no, We have to get to head. three. We have to get to three. <laughs> number three. Guardians of the Galaxy, the other really awesome action movie of the summer. Come on, it was a raccoon in a talking tree that <laughs> saved Hollywood this summer. I can't believe it didn't get Best Picture nod. You know, why not? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm part of the people who say, listen, a great movie is a great movie. And Guardians of the Galaxy is a great movie. It is funny. It is action-packed. It has great acting. It has great special effects. Why not? Because the Academy is too stuffy to allow yeah. a popular movie in like that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, hey, listen, I know the Academy doesn't like me, so I don't like them. <laughs> Number two. Birdman. What? Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. I was hoping Birdman. it wouldn't be on your Kate list at hates all. That movie. Oh. Well, you know, it, I will admit, it's a little weird for some people. Uh, you know, it is a little esoteric, but I love everything about it. I love kind of the inside joke about Michael Keaton playing a, playing a character who used to play a big superhero, and he wants to get credibility and seriousness. Uh, you know, I love the way it's made, you know, where it feels like you're just moving throughout the backstage area of this play and watching what's unfolding as if you're just somebody who's walking from room to room. And Michael Keaton's great. Edward Norton is even better. Sorry, you lost me at Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and finally, drum roll, please. Willie Waffles, favorite movie of the year. The Theory of Everything. I knew it! Oh, I love this movie. It really it is the adult version of The Fault in Our Stars as we watch Stephen Hawking, a young college student, falling in love but also contracting ALS. is so good. It really is. And Eddie Redmayne puts in one of those performances that people will talk about for years and years and years because it is a massively physical performance. You know, trying to walk and talk and look like Stephen Hawking, I, I think, just really blew my mind. The mannerisms are unreal. Yeah. And, and they covered up all the, all the mean stuff about Stephen Hawking, so you feel good about it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Willie Waffles picks for his favorite uh, top 10 movies of the year. Here's looking to an even bigger and better 2015. 2015, mark it down in your calendars, will be 
one of the greatest years for movies ever. Yes, I love hearing that. 